Because I can find where we are by knowing the time. Eh? How's that? There's only one sun. Cannot be in two places at the same time. When it's dark on one side of the globe, it's light on the other. The sun passes over a given point once every 24 hours. If we can find out how long it takes the sun to get from Jamaica to Portsmouth, it's simple to work out the distance between the two. So where are we then? We're here. The sun rises on a beautiful place today. We are in Barrow upon Humber. Now, if I take you back to the early 1700s, shipping was in its infancy, but trading was reaching its peak, which meant more people were at sea. But unfortunately, this meant more people dying at sea because nobody knew really where they were. They could use a stagnant to work out their latitude, but they couldn't really work out their longitude. Now latitude is roughly north and south of the equator, whereas the longitude is east and west. And if you think of all the currents that are in the sea, this meant you were lost a lot of the time. This was brought to a head on the 22nd of October of 1707, when four Navy vessels returning from Gibraltar crossed into the Isle of Sicily, killing over 2,000 men. It was a national disaster in Britain. And as a result, Queen Anne created the longitude problem. Now for decades, this prize would be in effect. It was over 20,000 pounds. Listen, today's money is over nearly, nearly four million pounds. Now the greatest scientists and astronomers of the land felt the longitude, working out your longitude at sea was impossible. But one man from here in Barrow upon Humber felt that a clock was the best way to determine your longitude at sea. Now, the only problem with that is he would have to invent a clock that was 50 times more accurate than any clock that had ever been invented before. Now John Harrison was a great clockmaker and he did have some notoriety and in 1720 he was commissioned to build a clock um, a few miles away in Lincolnshire. Now that was in, in sorry that was in 1720 And even at 27 years old, he was implementing things in that clock that would be used to create the marine chronometer. I will take you to Brocklesby and show you that clock now. His clocks were said to only have been a second a week slow. But Harrison, wanting the prize money, needed a more accurate clock and he got a chance to rectify that in 1720 as the Earl of Yarborough commissioned him to have a clock built on his stables and it's still there over 300 years later. It's not working. I can't believe it's not working. Um, I'll show you some of the inside mechanics of it. He would have to keep popping back here because when it got cold, the oil would congeal and it would stop working. But he 
invented the grasshopper in catchment that's still in place here to this day and as you will see it kind of pops out instead of the rub rubbing together and also he would use wood from North Africa called Lichment Vitae this is an incredibly oily wood and didn't need lubricating so the clock could run there maintenance free and it was his most accurate clock yet so the clock that isn't running is well my big tagline is to say it's been oil free and maintenance free for 300 years and still works i'm not sure why it's not being wound up at the moment but it's not but that is a huge piece of history there it's a work of art and the insides that i've shown you it's more impressive but i can't get in there now it's important to know harrison wasn't a scientist he was a joiner from lincolnshire that's all and i'll take you back to barrow for a bit more information now the way he thought that a clock was the best way to determine your longitude is that the world turns 360 degrees on its axis every 24 hours so my maths left a little bit to be desired here so the way he thought was 360 degrees divided by 24 hours means that 15 degrees passes per hour so if you could work out that point a was midday and three hours later you were at point b that would mean 45 degrees has the world has turned 45 degrees and you can work out your longitude i think that's right he knew what he was doing i have no idea now john harrison was only a joiner from here in Barrow in Lincolnshire. But it is said to be next to this pub where his workshop used to be. It's been long since demolished and this bit's fenced off. His workshop was said to be back here. So if you do know who he is, the H1 and the H2 clocks are said to have been designed built in there. Now there was never much to celebrate John Harrison and that statue was put there nearly exactly a year to, to this date. It was put there only last year to celebrate what a wonderful achievement he invented. When you're young you think that anything's possible but as you grow older you discover that it isn't. Well then, don't grow older. Mr. Harrison. Well, unfortunately, the sundial that was on top of here is now gone. That was the only thing of him. I don't know where it's gone. Oh dear. Um, if you're doing these videos, I'm learning lots of things have been taken away because people are damaging stuff. So I hope that's not happened to that, but... Um, it was the man's life. He would design H4, which was a smaller pocket watch. It's important to know all these marine chronometers he was inventing were huge things and they needed cabinets for it to go into the ship. He created the, the more 
pocket watch style H4 and he was still having difficulty claiming the money the prize fund although it was used by the Navy on a voyage to Jamaica and proven to be accurate the board would say nobody knows the longitude of Jamaica so it could have been a fluke things like this and then when he did the hate for they said you need to make lots more copies exact replicas so everybody in the Navy could use it before we know if it works George the third King George the third was a huge fan of these marine timekeepers and clocks and he and John Harrison became somewhat acquainted because of John Harrison's skill and George III personally tested the clocks in his own observatory and found that they were accurate and he personally spoke to the board and the board reluctantly gave him some of the prize money he was never awarded the full amount the problem is that Brocklesby clock when he was 27 he got the prize money when he was 80 and he would only live for just short of another three years I think it's such an amazing tale of passion of not hearing the word no even when you're told no press on and also even when you tell yourself no the passion will just burn inside and he achieved something that famous scientists and astronomers couldn't and he worked out how to tell your longitude at sea if you like please subscribe and like he, sorry, he's not buried in Greenwich. He is buried in London. All his marine chronometers that I'm sure I've given pictures of are all in Greenwich, Greenwich Museum. Now, if you're still not thinking he's very important, without him we wouldn't have air travel. We wouldn't have rockets. We wouldn't know about time zones. We wouldn't have satellite. We wouldn't have sat nav. His invention caused, saved thousands of lives at sea. And uh, his invention impacted all our lives. And if all that is still not good enough, thanks to him, the trotters made their millions. Thank you all very much for watching. If you've made it this far, please like and subscribe. This video is actually a suggestion by somebody that watches the channel, and I just happened to f fall in love with the story. If you want to know more, the film Longitude, which is very good, is on YouTube. Take care.